Now here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell a story, and I don't care how long it is, you're gonna listen because whether you realize it or not, you owe me that. Cincinnati, bear with me. When I was 19 years old, training in the business for one year at the Creative Pro Wrestling Academy, one faithful day I get pulled over to the side by my trainers, Pat Buck and Brian Myers. And they, yeah, they're good guys. They're good guys. And they say, kid, Congrats, your hard work's paid off. We got you WWE extra work. And to some, that might not sound like a lot, but to me at the time, it was the only show in town and it was an opportunity. And an opportunity is all I needed. So I packed my best gear, I put on my best suit, and I drove to the Barclays Center, didn't I? And then, me and the extras, we were all put together and we were then greeted and spoken to by none other than Sir William Regal. You proceeded to tell us you are all gonna go to the ring and have tryout matches before the show's proceedings tonight. You then, you then had us up against a random opponent. We were put in a single file line and my match was set to go on second. And the first match gets in the ring, two young dreamers. And the onlookers were as follows. Arn Anderson, Dean Malenko, Adam Pierce, and William Regal. They then locked up, and Dean Malenko rang the bell and he said, get out. The pressure was on, man, then it was my turn. I was shaking like a leaf I got in that ring, but I knew I wasn't fighting for a contract. I was fighting for my life, because make no mistake about it, Will, professional wrestling is my life! <laughs> After the match was over and I was soaking wet, I was victorious, and every single one of you looked at me like I had eight heads, and then you, pulled me away from the group and you said, follow me. And you brought me to a separate room where it was just the two of us. And you said, kid, you got three minutes to sell yourself to me. Go. And boy, did I. And by the time I was done talking, your jaw was on the floor, wasn't it? And then you picked it up and I'll never forget what you said to me. You said, kid, I'm gonna get you a job here today. And then what happened, huh? And then what happened? And then I realized in that moment, I did it. I was no longer gonna be looked at by all the naysayers as a five foot nothing ADD riddle Jew boy. No, no, I was gonna be a superstar. I had done it. My dream was about to be accomplished. And then, with a crooked grin, you said, how old are you, kid? And I said, 19 years old, sir. And you looked at me and you said, kid, I'm sorry, but you're much too young. My heart stopped, my dreams evaporated in that fell swoop. And in that fell swoop, my heart stopped, but then you resuscitated me with your version of hope. You said to me, kid, I don't like to put my name on many people, but when I do, they get jobs here. The list is small, but the list is as follows. Claudio Castagnoli. Brian Danielson, and Cincinnati's own John Moxley. And kid, here's what I want. I see something in you. When you become of age, I will personally put my name on you. But until then, I want you to go home. I want you to work your ass off. And every single month, I want you to send me a match and a promo. So I went home, didn't I, Will? And I busted my ass 
Month one, you respond to me, Maxwell. Thank you so much. I look forward to reviewing your progress. Month two, Maxwell. Thank you so much. I look forward to reviewing your progress. Then month three came along, didn't it, Will? Month three came along. When you told me to send you a match and a promo every month, month three comes along, and you send me a promo that I have saved to my phone to this day. You send me a promo, smirk all you want, you son of a bitch. You send me a promo, you send me a promo that I have read every single day since. Let me read it to you here today live. Here's the email you sent me. Max, I'm a very, very busy man. I've got talent from all over the world to watch, and I've just had to sit for minutes watching you, and you put this in quotations, show me your acting skills. Do not reply to this, but how would this make me say, oh, I know, let's hire Max. Make a name for yourself in the wrestling world and you'll get noticed. That means being a high-level performer. When you do, trust me, I'll know. Unfortunately for you, the game has changed. The WWE exclusively hires the best talent in the world of the top world-class athletes. When you're one of them, then maybe send me your stuff. Yours sincerely, William Regal. That's the email you sent to a 19-year-old kid, a child with a dream, and you squandered it! Look at me, look at me, no, no, look at me. This is real life, goddammit. When I read that email, when I read that email, I, when I read that email, I wanted to quit professional wrestling, I wanted to quit my life. Look me in the eyes when I say this. That email made me want to kill myself! And then, and then I realized that if I did, then you and all the naysayers would win, and I couldn't have that. Now, could I, Will? No, no. And now here we are, and my God, have the tables turned. The year is 2022, and you are nothing more but a sad, withered old man who got fired! who got fired. And now you have snuck into my company like a flea-ridden rat by sticking to talents far better than you ever were like a succubus. And you know who I am? I'm MJF. Oh yeah. I'm the 26-year-old kid who's on top of this business. I'm a generational talent. And I'm also the man who your former employers now would be willing to take several human lives simply to get me to put pen to paper in the bidding war of 2024. I want you to look at me nice and good when I say this, Regal. I read that email every single day, but not not to put a chip on my shoulder, no, no. I read that email whenever I need a good, hearty laugh. Because that's what you've become to me, Will. Nothing more than a joke. And you know who I'm about to become? The AEW Champion of the World! Because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman! And I'm better than you, and you know it! Job done. You mentioned being 19 and being a child. At 16, I left home and went to work on a carnival and was having to fight grown men to get into this industry. 
I wasn't trying to cast you aside, Max. I saw exactly in you what I'm seeing now, and it's making me happy. I saw somebody who was going to be a big, big star. I wanted to light a fire under your backside. One, because we live in a day and age where you can't have grown men smashing your face in when you're 16 and when you're 17 and when you're crying every single night that you go to bed and there's blood running out of every hole in your body and you want to quit, but you won't let yourself because I'm 17. I said, no, I will not quit. I will keep going because I am going to be a professional wrestler. And if a bloody email is what it took to get you to this place, and you've held on to that for seven years. You've had it easy, sunshine. <laughs> and that's exactly what you've had. You've had it easy because you mastered something that you seem to forget. We spent several times together where I told you, this is what you need to get good at, sunshine. You need to practice. Every time you brush your teeth, you need to stand and talk and practice and get so people take notice of you. When you pick up a microphone, I could see how incredibly talented you were then. I watched you against Young Wheeler the other week. I can see what an incredible talent you are. You're 26 years old. Before you were born, I was insulting Mr. Shivani. I was beating people up, but I would never lay a hand on him. I'm what they call an ODV. That's an ordinary decent villain. Anybody that steps between these ropes, that's fair game. But you never put your hand on somebody like Mr. Shivani. I wanted you to be where you are. I knew you had it in you. The only problem is you've let me down because you took shortcuts. You haven't. You haven't done anything to prove anything to me yet. Just because you're getting paid here doesn't prove anything to me. Just because you're making lots of money, that still doesn't prove anything to me. You hire people to do your bad work for you. You wear a, a, a ring to knock people out. I didn't need a ring to knock people out. When I used these, it was because I just like hitting people with them. <laughs> Max. Don't take any shortcuts. You want to be a real bad guy? You want to be the devil? Then make a name for yourself by doing it right. Beat everybody that stands in front of you, and I don't care what liberties you take with competitors. Just get to that place. But if you want to be the devil, show the world right now. Or are you going to just take another shortcut and so you can come out here and act like a victim and whine and cry? You still have a lot to prove. <laughs> William Regal has just completely undermined MJF. 